Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to go over gravitational potential and gravitational potential energy. So let's get started. Now we're going to begin by looking at gravitational potential and it says that the gravitational potential given the symbol capital V at a point in a gravitational field is the work done by external forces in moving unit mass, i.e. one kilogram, from infinity to that point. So if we were to write this as an expression, we could say that V is equal to the work done divided by the mass. Another key point is that we define the theoretical zero of gravitational potential for an isolated point mass to be at infinity. And we have an equation for gravitational potential, which says that V is equal to minus G times M over R, where V is the gravitational potential measured in joules per kilogram, Capital G is the universal constant of gravitation measured in meters cubed per kilogram per second squared, we've seen that one before. Capital M is the mass of the object causing a gravitational field measured in kilograms, and R is the distance from the centre of the mass measured in metres. It then says to note that the minus sign is present to show that gravitational fields always act towards the attracting mass. So looking back in the notes, remember we saw for a planet, the gravitational field lines around that planet would look like this, going towards the centre of the planet. So just to help you visualise this concept, I'm going to show you an animation. So imagine we've got a one kilogram mass at infinity, that is the theoretical zero of gravitational potential. So right now gravitational potential will be zero joules per kilogram because the mass is at a distance of infinity away from the this mass of 10 kilograms. And when we're at infinity, notice that the work done on this mass is a value of 0 nanojoules. Now if we were to bring our 1 kilogram mass closer and closer to our 10 kilogram mass, you notice that the work done value down here is actually increasing but negatively, so we're getting a bigger negative value. And remember that is because we've said that the gravitational field lines will be acting in towards the centre of the mass, and because we've defined zero joules to be at infinity. Going back to the notes now, it says that a gravitational potential well is a way of conceptualising the gravitational potential field around a body such as a planet. The diagram below is for a round planet. The bigger the planet or star is, the greater will be its extent and depth. The deeper the well is, the more energy will be required by an object trying to escape it. And just to show you this as an animation, so ignoring all of this and just looking at the words in bold below there, it says that an object of mass m near the earth will fall down the well unless it has sufficient kinetic energy to escape. The mass will then be captured by the earth or other planet or star. So if we look at this, you'll see that the mass is moving round and round in a sort of spiral motion until it gets to the bottom of the well. And it says there that an object entering the atmosphere may lose energy due to friction in the atmosphere and spiral downwards losing gravitational potential energy. Its velocity will increase, so it gains kinetic energy until it hits the surface of the Earth or other planet or star. So just to show you that again, We're now going to take a look at gravitational potential energy, which we've already kind of touched on, but it says that gravitational potential energy at the Earth's surface is found using the old classic equation EP equals MGH, which you've seen at National 5 and higher level, and the value of gravitational field strength G is taken as a fixed value. At greater distances, however, the gravitational force must be taken into account. We can rearrange our earlier expression for V to get the work done, i.e. the energy. So remember we said that V is equal to the work done divided by the mass. Well, if we rearrange for work done, we get V, our gravitational potential, times the mass. So we're now saying that the gravitational potential energy is our energy here, our work done, which is equal to minus GM over R. Remember that was our expression for gravitational potential times by a mass M, which we can give the symbol of small m which gives EP equals minus GM times M over R. So all we need to do to get from our gravitational potential V to our gravitational potential energy EP is we multiply our gravitational potential by the mass of the second object. And what do the symbols mean? Well, EP is the gravitational potential energy measured in joules. G is the universal constant of gravitation measured in meters cubed per kilogram per second squared as before. Capital M is the mass of the object causing a gravitational field in kilograms. Small m is the mass of the object present in the gravitational field measured in kilograms. And R is the distance from the centre of the mass measured in metres. It then says to note that gravitational potential energy also has the value of zero at infinity, which we saw in the first animation earlier, where we brought the smaller mass closer to the bigger mass and your work done value decreased, i.e. it became more negative, which showed that the gravitational potential energy gets more negative as you bring the masses closer together. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.